Well, if you're like me, every time you go about three or 30 miles an hour over the speed limit, you got flashing lights behind you and you're being pulled over. And then you're taking out the fake ID you had made with your face, but Adam Schiff's name so that he's constantly getting court summons in cities he was never in. Don't call me a hero. I'm just doing my job. Mm -hmm. Yet, despite the fact that there is a police officer around for every one of my minor traffic violations and identity thefts, somehow these protesters around the country are allowed to get away with everything. I mean, they successfully pulled down a statue of Christopher Columbus. Yay. Made by an immigrant, by the way. Hmm. That's not a five minute job. Where are the police to stop this? Or when these super woke protesters to face this statue, this old white guy, uh, Matthias Baldwin, who was a colonizer and a murderer, as you could have seen on that last uh, the last shot there. Um, it was spray painted on the base, except Matthias Baldwin was an abolitionist who argued for the constitutional rights for blacks to vote and founded a school for blacks that he paid for himself. This is the sort of statue a white supremacist would deface. But then these idiots did it anyway. And did they get in trouble? <laughs> oh, I got my speeding ticket, but they didn't get in trouble for that. And how do you know how many, you know, I mean, seriously, do you know how many times I've tried to steal an entire cheesecake? Like a thousand times. Yet, looking at the riots, you've got this woman waltzing down the street with a white chocolate raspberry truffle, and nobody says anything. Come on. And now we've apparently just started ceding territory to protesters as long as they act douchey enough. I think that's the line. I've been saying this for a while now, but the biggest mistake I think we've seen so far was to allow protesters to take and burn down an actual police precinct. You cannot let that happen under any circumstances. It sends a message to everybody that if you're aggressive enough, you'll get anything you want. And it sent a message to protesters and rioters across the country. Go for it. You might get it. Now in Seattle, the same mistakes are happening again, where the city has just handed over several city blocks to let the protesters take a stab at governing. This area encompasses local businesses uh, affecting people's lives, but <laughs> oh, no matter. Let these crazy kids get their energy out. It's basically an Antifa version of Chuck E. Cheese. They're calling it Chaz. Chaz. The Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, C-H-A-Z, Chaz. It's interesting that this thing started with the destruction of an auto zone, and now here we are witnessing the destruction of another auto zone. It's not exactly clear why Seattle is allowing this to occur, other than just general agreement that capitalism is evil and a desire to send the message to the protesters that we're terrified of you and we will do anything that you want. The, major, uh, the mayor basically said, you know, we're having problems with conflicts, uh, so we left. If we leave, you know, no conflicts, right? Despite the fact that there are 500 residential homes in this area who now have no police to protect them. It's not America anymore. It's Chaz. Chaz. This used to be such a ridiculous thought that it would only occur in sketch comedy shows. We're still waiting for information from either side. All we know is that federal agents have surrounded this remote cabin. No word on how many people may be involved or what their demands might be. Oh, yeah. Dougie? Hey! Get off my land! Get off my land! It's okay, Dougie. You win. Yeah, he's right. You won. The United States government recognizes your independence. Huh? Dougie, you wore us out. It's true. The governor and the president were contacted, and they said they didn't care. If you want to be your own country, that's fine with them. Really? Yeah, all you got to do is sign here. You <laughs> sign this. That's it. That's it. It's, it's, it's not how it happens. The joke at the time, directed at right-wing separatist groups, yelling, get off my land! was that the government never just gives in and says, okay, crazy people, the land is yours, I guess. That never happens. Now it is actually happening, and apparently not that big of a deal. I guess it helps if you're a left-wing separatist movement. Though I'm not sure the autonomous zone is going to get a snappy national anthem like this. I decided that my nation needed an anthem, so I hired a lady from the city to come up and write one for me. Yeah! <laughs> I don't think you're, you're going to be singing that one all day. Now, it is a bit 
of an exaggeration at this point to think of the autonomous zone as its own country, even though many inside of it do. Most of the time, it looks like a really smelly outdoor music festival without talented musicians, but with more drugs. And the left's attempt to say that this is somehow proving that we can defund the police around the country is just asinine. It's a few blocks. As the mayor pointed out, first responders are stationed right outside the area in case something really goes wrong. So most people aren't going to loot a store because what are you going to do? Take the flat screen to another part of your six block area? But it has been hilarious to watch these morons try to set up a society. It really has. First of all, they, they invited some homeless people to join them and then bad things happened. Alert two, uh, the homeless people we invited took away all the food at the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. Uh, we need more food to keep the area operational. Please, if possible, bring vegan meat substitutes. I mean, this is a, how is this real? Fruits, oats, soy products, anything to help us eat. Anything to help us eat, except apparently a cheeseburger. Also, it's been like two days and you've taken over an area with a ton of restaurants. How hungry can you be? Don't worry though. They are also learning to farm, sort of. As Matt Walsh pointed out, <laughs> the Antifa people in the autonomous zone are taking up farming. They just poured topsoil onto the grass and seem to have simply placed some of the plants onto the soil rather than digging holes and are expecting to keep the plot sufficiently watered with a watering can. They should be able to feed themselves for a good hour, though, if all of that works out in a few months. But I don't know if that's going to work out. Uh, I guess what was most surprising was their instant willingness to implement so much of President Trump's agenda. First, build that wall. I mean, they, they did it like right away. Then you have increased border security. They've got border agents on the border of their autonomous land. And they always accuse Trump and his supporters of being gun-toting warlords. Well, they've had like a couple of days so far, and apparently they already have their own warlord. The... Uh, this guy apparently is being called a warlord by other people in the autonomous zone. The other autonomous zone residents aren't feeling all that autonomous. Now, this guy's name is Raz, because obviously his name is Raz. He doesn't call himself a warlord yet, but he's the recognized police chief of the autonomous zone, which was, of course, created so that there would be no police. Uh, but a power vacuum, vacuum usually gets filled. And in this zone, it was apparently supposedly free of the one person thrusting their will upon another. That was the whole concept. Look what happens when the police chief doesn't like someone's graffiti. It got nasty. It got nasty. It's easy to sit back and make fun of these dopes. And it's also important, I would say. Like in their list of demands, uh, number six and seven, there will be no government, no person or group will have power over another. Number seven, communities will make decisions about how they live and how they make sure that everyone has what they need to live a dignified life. So you have no power over another person, but communities will make the decisions. Well, what happens if you disagree with the community? No one expects you to make sense, of course, if you're in this group, but at least try not to put the things that directly disagree with each other right next to each other on the list. Like, make it like number two and number nine, not six and seven. But the temptation to solely mock them is not a good one. And I mean, it's definitely good to mock them, but not solely to mock them. I have their full list of demands here. And you have to go over some of them. They're insane. Seattle Police Department uh, and attached court system are beyond reform. We do not request reform. We demand abolition. We demand reparations for victims of police brutality in a form to be determined, which I guess is like the reparations blank check. Then you've got, we demand the city of Seattle and the state government to release any prisoner serving time for a marijuana-related offense and expunge the related conviction. Which is interesting. Like, what if they murdered 25 people, but they were high? Maybe they get out. Uh, we demand the replacement of current criminal justice system and the creation of a restorative, transformative accountability program as a replacement for imprisonment. Sounds wonderful. We demand that the police department, between now and the time of abolition in the near future, empty its lost and found and return property owned by the city. 
Seems a little questionable. I love this. We demand the de-gentrification of Seattle, starting with rent control, because rent control's worked out well when it's been tried. We demand hospitals and care facilities of Seattle employ black doctors and nurses specifically to help care for black patients. The color of the skin of the doctor, is that what's important to you? We demand that people of Seattle seek out and proudly support black-owned business businesses. Look, stop worrying about the color of skin. That's what got us into the problem in the first place that you're complaining about. Just communist nonsense, and it's the same stuff you saw at Occupy Wall Street. There's this weird anti-capitalist thing that happens when what they really want is capitalism. They supposedly want a safe community with everything that people need, where people can flourish. That's capitalism. It's not perfect, but it's as close as anyone has ever been able to get. And for the very profit-based uh, show, South Park, as they illustrated. We don't need corporations. We don't need money. This can become a commune where everyone just helps each other. Yeah, we'll have one guy who, like, who like makes bread. And one guy who, like, looks out for other people's safety. You mean like a baker and a cop? No, no, can't you imagine a place where people live together and, like, provide services for each other in exchange for their services? Yeah, it's called a town. You kids just haven't been to college yet. But just you wait. This thing is about to get huge. <laughs> I bet it is. Ask anyone around uh, just a few decades ago to compare their lives and society to the one we have today. And if they're actually honest, they'll admit it. This crazy utopia everyone is always yearning for is a lot closer than you think. This message and this civilization are brought to you by capitalism.